welcome back to Learn With A Classic. And if you're new to my channel, I hope you stick around and consider subscribing. I put new videos every week, so there's always something new to watch here on the channel. And if you're a returning subscriber, you might be a little surprised seeing what I'm driving. I'm out in my 1975 XJ6. However, it doesn't have any engine problems at the moment. The last video we diagnosed, or the last couple of videos on this car diagnosed it had bad head gasket and where it was blowing out exhaust gases in the coolant. We checked that with a hydrocarbon test. So you might be wondering, well, what's going on now? And no, it was not the head gasket in a can that fixed it. That was just a fun experiment. I always wanted to try. However, about a week ago, I decided to go out and film basically a video to answer a lot of you guys' questions. There were so many comments and so many questions uh, on those two videos. I tried to answer as many of them as I can, but after a while, I just realized it'd be easier to make a just a short film about it. And that's what I started with. And then I got more and more intrigued and I started testing things. And I tried to retorque the head. That actually went really well, even after it had gone that many kilometers since um, since I put a new head gasket on, retorqued it, and it's fine. And I just filmed everything, and I kept on going for about a week or so trying things. It's been a week and two days, I think, since I started trying these things, and it's still going fine. So what I'm going to do now, we're going to go back in time. I'll show you the footage of basically me trying everything, and... I may sound a little bit negative in some of that footage, it's just because I don't believe that anything good is going to happen at all. I believe that it's still, you know, a broken engine. However, during that time, I started to realize that maybe it can be saved. And I should say now that during this week, I have driven about 100 kilometers so far, haven't lost any coolant, and I still don't have any coolant in the exhaust. So let's go back in time and see how I discovered all of that. It's a really gray and damp day today, but we're finally getting rid of some of the snow. So I thought I'd take the opportunity to clean off the XJ6, just get rid of all of the dirt and grime. I have washed it during the winter a couple times whenever I've gotten a chance, but it's you know, still pretty dirty and in the wheelhouse and everywhere and you see back there. So I'm gonna wash it off, get it really clean. But before that, I thought I'd address some of the things from the last couple of videos. Yes, I tried the whole pour that thing in the cooling system, I guess, in the can. That's just because I've really always wanted to try it. And since I do believe this engine is, has pretty much had it, I think it's had a trouble past. Uh, a lot of people are asking, you know, how, why do you think it's a crack? Why do you think you know, these sort of things? Well, sometimes it's hard because I know there's some viewers that only see some videos and I don't, I try to not repeat everything in every single video. Um, Sometimes I do just to inform people of what's been going on, but basically the head has been to machine shop. It has been checked by them. They told me it did not have any cracks in it and they skimmed it. So I trust them and I believe that the head is fine. The block is as much as what I can tell from not disassembling it. Um, looks fine. I cleaned up the surface. I uh, checked with a metal straight edge and feeler gauges. It was really perfectly straight. I cleaned it up very, spent hours cleaning it, and I was very thorough with putting the gasket back on. I used a Payen head gasket, which fit really well. As per instructions, I did not put any copper spray on or anything like that. Um, the manufacturer did not recommend it, so that's not something I tried. It went on there dry. Uh, I did retorque the head when it had gone up to uh, basically warm up the first time I retorqued it and then after I don't remember how long but for a couple drives I retorqued it again and then I haven't touched this that's one thing we're actually going to try today I have a torque wrench here set to the uh, right amount I have the manual here here's the torque sequence we've gone through this before it's 54 foot pounds or 7.5 uh, kilograms there so I've set the torque wrench to that we'll see if anything happens um, the last time that the head gasket blew I tried retorquing it and it got worse the next time it leaked a lot more but we're gonna give it a shot I'm also gonna remove the spark plugs we're gonna have a look and see if one of them is particularly clean because then we can sort of tell if that cylinder is burning burning coolant uh, got some comments as well that well the exhaust, just that the water coming exhaust is not an indication. Well in the video before that I did see that there was exhaust gases in the coolant. 
And also, I mean, like, this will not come across on camera, but I could sort of feel and tell that it wasn't running right. I could tell it was misfiring. And also from that drive, there should not have been that much collecting in the exhaust, even though it was around zero degrees outside Celsius. After such a long drive, it really shouldn't. Like, I mean, if I compare it with the V12, that thing just sitting idling for about 10 minutes, it will stop smoking. It will heat up the exhaust enough so that it um, any condensation has gone away. But if we do manage to retighten the head down a little bit, and it doesn't look too bad when we have a look at the spark plugs, I thought that we fire it up again. I'll remove some of the coolant once more. We'll test once more with my cylinder head leak test. See if we have any exhaust gases in there and go from there. Some of you guys are also wondering, well, why am I thinking about another engine and not restoring this one? Well, because if it is something in the block, I, I'm not going to fix that because it costs quite a bit of money to get the block tested. And if it's found to be faulty, I've got to throw it away anyways. This is not a number matching this car. Then I'll just look for a different, you know, same 4.2 liter XK engine. Also, I mean, this thing, it runs pretty well, but it's definitely not in this first sort of flesh of youth. It can be a tiny, not rattly, but you can sometimes hear what I, I believe it sounds like a tiny bit of piston slap when it's very cold outside and it's cold. It goes away when it's warm. It does have good oil pressure, doesn't use oil and um, nothing like that. It doesn't run hot. So, I mean, it does run well. And I think if it didn't have a head gasket failure and you, know, you take care of it, do frequent oil change and all that, it will probably run for years. However, it's probably not worth taking it apart once more. I'm not going to do this a third time on this engine. Then I'm just going to find another one. But enough talking here. Set up the camera. Let's see if we can torque this down a little bit more. I set up a little bit of a portable light there, so I hope you guys can see a little bit. But really all we're seeing is we can torque this anymore. So we'll start with number one. Let's see. Fourth one, one, two, three, four. So that's number one. Yep, nothing. Number two. Nothing. Three. Yeah, nothing at all so far. Five. Okay, that one moved a tiny bit, number seven over here. So that's near, uh, let's see, that's near the cylinder nearest the firewall over here. And number eight. Okay, that one moved a tiny bit as well. And we got nine, seems to be straight across. Also moved a tiny, tiny bit. 10 did not move. Let's see. That moved a tiny bit. And we got 12 in there. Moved a tiny, tiny bit. And I will need a small extension for that. Okay. Moved a tiny bit. And it's not going on there perfectly straight. I need to move these out of the way, but we're just really seeing if anything at all happens. And that moved a tiny, tiny bit as well. So we're talking a very small amount of movement. One thing we could try now, because really we've got nothing to lose, is don't know the accuracy of my torque wrench. It hasn't failed me in the past, but just to be on the safe side, let's just turn it up a tiny bit and I'll go through all of them. Let's see, we're at 54 foot pounds. Uh, we'll go up just, let's see here. Mine shows us in kilograms, so that's 7.5 kilograms. Let's go to, let's go to eight. So that's just a little bit more. I'll go through, torque them all again. Uh, and I'll let you know if there was a big difference or not. 
So I torqued the head a little bit more. The only ones I really noticed that sort of moved a little bit more than the others are these two over here. So between cylinder one and cylinder two. Last time when the hand gasket blew, it blew here on cylinder two between the coolant passage over here into that cylinder is really where it blew. And maybe I saw some of it in cylinder four, but I think it was mostly here. If you remember, if I could spin the engine over after been sitting for a while with the plugs out, it would shoot water out of there. Something that we may try in a little bit. However, I took the spark plugs out and they're laid up so it's cylinder one through cylinder six. And the good news is they all look pretty much identical. They're a little, little dark, but I've also been doing a lot of short trips during the winter here with you know cold starts and I believe it has been running a tiny, tiny bit rich by the looks of it. But uh, I don't see any one that looks different than the other one. It doesn't look like any of them you know, steam cleaned or anything by coolant. So this could actually be a little bit of good news. Not really sure what to believe at the moment. I think the next thing to do is measure the coolant level again, because I ran it last time. Before we put that in, I ch or before we ran it last time, I checked, and I think it was about six centimeters up in the expansion tank. So I'll take both caps off. We'll have a look at that. And then, yeah, we'll go from there. Remove both caps. There was a tiny, tiny bit of pressure. I mean, not very much at all, but just a tiny bit when I opened that one. Level is perfect in there where it should be. Now let's see the expansion tank. Dip it. And we are, I guess we're close to the five, but I don't know, we're not in the same place as last time, so maybe the ground's not perfectly level there or here. So yeah, we're up at five. So maybe there was a small coolant loss, maybe there was not. Kind of hard to tell, but I mean, it's not completely empty, so we didn't lose that much coolant, but maybe we lost, if we lost a centimeter, yeah, I mean, it's kind of hard to tell. So, yeah, I'm kind of wondering what to do now. I don't want to be hopeful because um, I really, I, know, I really don't believe in it, but you never know. So, next thing is we'll connect up the battery again, disconnect the ignition, and let's turn this thing over and make sure that, you know, it doesn't shoot water straight out of any of the uh, cylinders. And we'll go from there and then fire it up, I think. Let it warm up a little bit, shut it down, uh, remove some coolant, and uh, do the test again. I've disconnected the fuel pump, disabled the spark, so let's just crank it over and see if anything comes out of the spark plug holes. Nope, nothing at all like that. So you know what I just thought of before I uh, put everything back together and start it up? I'm gonna do a quick compression test just off camera and I'll come back with the results. Here are the results. And just to let you know, a couple of weeks ago, maybe three or so, I did a compression test and they were all between, you know, 155 the highest, and I think the lowest, yeah, 140. They were all in that range. So pretty okay for an old engine. But you see now cylinder two and cylinder three are down. Those are the, this one here, cylinder two, cylinder three. So before I know it was leaking in cylinder two. Here is the head gasket from last time. So you got cylinder one, cylinder two. This is, it's upside down here at the moment. So this is the block side, but you can kind of see just how close it is here. So this is a coolant passage that goes up there. And there you see, there's pretty much nothing there. And yeah, so my guess is that it is blowing across here. So no real point in going any further, I think. I don't think of any point in testing if there are any hydrocarbons in the um, coolant. But you know what, I'm gonna remove a little bit of coolant from there. We'll start up and I'll try it for you guys anyways, but I really don't think that, I, I really think there is something wrong here. However, I do want to start up anyways to get out and get it cleaned a little bit, but I hope this answers some of the questions that you guys had that, um, yeah, this engine has probably pretty much had it. 
All right, we have some weird results here. I tested it forever and ever, and it stayed blue. Whatever I did, I could not get this to change to yellow. So it means it's not blowing out exhaust gases in the coolant anymore. So very, very strange. I think the only thing really left to do is, I think I'll do a warm compression test on these three cylinders, because I know what they are, really quickly, and uh, I'll get back to you guys. But this is weird. So possibly the head gasket sealer sealed up part of the leak or something, so it's not pushing into coolant. But I don't know, I, I think it's still burning because it, I mean, it's been smoking really badly or there's just a lot of coolant in the exhaust and that's going to take a long time to burn off. I don't really know. I'll put the cap back on and I'll perform that warm compression test. Once again, we have the results here. The, here are the old ones on top. I just tested three, two, and one. So cylinder three went from 125 to 150. Cylinder 2 went from 100 to 120, and cylinder 1 stayed the same. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe... Yeah, I mean, it's really hard to tell. Uh, maybe there's been... You know, of course there has been some type of head gasket leak because it did have hydrocarbons in, in the coolant before, so maybe... The, uh, you know, the, there's been some water sitting in those two cylinders a little bit and that has damaged it a little bit. And that's why the compression has gone down. Maybe if it's actually not leaking anymore and it gets driven a bit, it's going to go back up again. I mean, none of this is ideal, but it's very, very strange. I don't really know what to do next. I think actually the only really thing to do next is top up the coolant and go for a drive. See if how long it takes if it actually does get rid of some of the coolant out of the exhaust, if it starts running better. Uh, one thing we could do, we'll go on the other side and we'll check the oil again, just make sure that's not milky in there. Let's start with the oil filler cap. Got gloves on because everything is still really, really hot. Perfectly, perfectly clean. Nothing wrong there at all. And check the dipstick. Yeah, I mean, that is just normal oil. So we got nothing going in the coolant system again. So yeah, I think I will actually just drive it. I'm not gonna do it right now, but I will um, I will drive it for a couple of days. I'm not gonna use it to, um, to run any errands. I'm just gonna, you know, drive around my house, uh, you know, not too far in case I, something happens and I can actually walk home. But drive it, let it run for a bit, and see see what happens. And I'll update you guys in a couple of days. It's been a little more than a week of driving this thing around, and I removed some of the cool ones again, put my tester in, and I've been doing this for about five minutes now. And as you can see, it is so nice and blue, it's not changing. So as you can see from that video, or basically the sequence of what happened, it is running well now. There are no real major issues, so retorquing the head worked. I over torqued it by about half a kilo, so everything is torqued to uh, 8 kilos at the moment. I also tried to retorque the head again about halfway through the week. None of it moved again, but that's something I plan on doing after, I don't know how long, but Maybe after I've done a couple of longer trips, you know, long drives out on the highway, things like that, I will retorque everything again, just make sure it's fine. Hopefully it stops moving now. Um, this is the third or fourth time I retorque this, this head. So I'm hoping that everything is completely compressed now and it's not gonna need it anymore. And fingers crossed that actually it stays tight this time because 
even if the compression is not perfect on this engine and yes i have retried that one more time the cylinder number two i believe that was at 120 it's up to about 130 now which i mean there is the 10 percent rule that should be 10 percent difference between you know the highest and the lowest which is ideal however this is a 40 something year old engine with unknown real history of mileage it runs smooth it pulls well it doesn't foul plugs it doesn't burn oil i'm fine with that little bit of a compression difference i can live with that that's not really a big issue and also maybe we'll retry the compression again after a couple months or so if everything is still running well as it is we'll just retry and make sure maybe it will go up and be around the 140 i don't know but i'm pretty happy with the levels anyways so other than that everything is really really running fine it is um not smoking after a long trip i drove it right, right now i mean i'm just driving around my house here coming back from a small errand it smokes a little bit on these cold days but i took it out on a warm sunny day over the weekend and no smoke no nothing and you can't probably even tell that it's running at the moment, but it's running really smoothly. No misfires, no nothing. It's perfect temperature, really good oil pressure. Everything is just working really well. I would like to thank you guys so much for your continued support on this car. Even if it was basically failing me, you guys were really encouraging and wanting me to continue, even if that meant swapping other engine. And it really does mean a lot. It seems like you guys really do enjoy this car. And because the engine seems to be fine at the moment, I have some pretty big plans for this car. It's going to be revealed in a couple weeks or so, but let's just say it has to do with the inside here. A lot of guys have been complaining about that. And I'm going to do something about that, but I will reveal all that in a couple weeks. Anyways, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe to the channel. It really does help out a lot. Anyways, until next time, I'm Adam, and this was Logan with a Classic. I'll see you soon.